I would like to thank you all on behalf of Mother j &T and the teachers of TKG Academy for joining us today. We have been working for three months with the students on descriptions and of the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya and we have taught them the stories of Lord Chaitanya as he made his route throughout India and the kids are going to be sharing those pastimes with you today. We introduced, just as in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, first there is a description of the philosophy behind Lord Chaitanya. The students learned about the reason why Lord Chaitanya appeared. Before we start, I would like everybody to repeat after me and we can chant for all of five minutes. To give, and as we chant, if we can pray to Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu and all of his associates to give the students encouragement in their presentations. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya Jaya Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vinda. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Advaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Advaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda All right, we will start off with Selena's essay on the, appear the reason for the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thank you. My title is Who is Lord Chaitanya and what is the reason for his appearance? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the avatar of Krishna himself. In the year 1407, Srimati Sachi Devi gave birth to Lord Chaitanya during the lunar eclipse in India. Because Lord Chaitanya was born at the same time as the eclipse, this indicated the mission he was to carry out in life. In the Holy Bible, Psalm 102, it says, Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. This was the mission, to preach the importance of chanting the Lord's name and spread spiritual love of God all over the world. But why would this child, whose skin complexion is that of gold, need to preach or even want to preach God's name? Our answer begins with the sage Narada Muni in his discovery. One time, Narada Muni saw the living being suffering greatly in the age of Kali. Being very worried, Narada Muni set out for Dorkadam to ask Krishna to descend unto the earth and restore the principles of religion. Meanwhile, Sri Krishna was staying at the palace of Rukmini Devi. Krishna enjoyed the company of Rukmini Devi, but Rukmini was very troubled and cried uncontrollably. Krishna's heart was breaking at the sight of his queen being this upset. He asked her what was wrong. Rukmini replied by saying, Even though you are here with me, I am very sad because you are leaving very soon. She talked about pure love and how it is selfless, and how a devotee completely surrenders to the Lord. Rukmini mentioned Srimati Radharani's qualities, and now only Sri Radha knows the deep internal ecstasies of pure love. Krishna was surprised that he did not notice. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and should know the mood of his devotees. Krishna wanted to understand the glories of Radharani's love, the wonderful qualities in him that she relishes through her love, and how happy she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love. Narada Muni then entered the room Krishna was in and explained to him that only he, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, could descend upon the earth and deliver the fallen souls. Krishna revealed to Narada Muni how he would appear as a son of Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra in Navadvip Dham. He would assume Srimati Radharani's luster and mood in a golden form. From Lord Chaitanya's early childhood, he preached the importance of chanting the holy name. When he got older, he gave a revelation of God's love for the soul and the soul's love for God. When, uh, to help people achieve this stage of love for God, he taught a simple process that requires no qualifications at all. It is called Namasankirtan, the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya also explained the connection between God and the soul in terms of Beda and Abeda, the, dif 
Difference and oneness. In this case, difference is the acceptance of a material world, the acceptance of an uncountable number of souls, and the acceptance of a perfect God. Oneness is the acceptance of one supreme entity with no differentiation in form or qualities. Only the belief in difference can put a relationship between God and the soul, but by only believing in difference can put a, dif can put a distance between God and the soul. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya explained that by believing in difference and oneness, also known as achintya veda aveda, the relationship between God and the soul increases, and the distance means nothing. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu desired that not just India, but that the whole world practice the chanting of Krishna's name with love. And now we ask Ram to come and read his essay. A few hundred years ago, Lord Sri Krishna had to come down from the spiritual world to restore religion to earth. He came in a certain form for a certain purpose. Lord Chaitanya is, is the golden avatar, formed with Radharani's sentiment and complexion, though he is Krishna himself. He had many purposes to appear on earth. One was to restore our belief in God. The other, however, was to understand the feeling that his devotees and Radharani get when serving him. This is why he wanted Radharani's sentiment. What he taught is stated by Bhani Swami on Krishna.com. Achinta beta beta, meaning oneness and difference joined by the inconceivable power of God. People that believe in beta or difference believe that there is a real material world, infinite souls, and a God with perfect qualities, form, and action. A beta or oneness is when people accept the existence of one supreme entity with no form, qualities, souls, or spiritual and material worlds. A chinta beta beta is hard to understand for it is contra contradictory, but Lord Shaitanya clarified it for us. He also taught the Dharma of Kali Yuga, Namasankirtan. We must simply say the names of God, and there are no qualifications except faith. Lord Chaitanya, being satisfied with his work, disappeared from earth. Though he is gone, we continue the movement he started. And now we request all the younger children to come and stand up here. We're going to be reciting the entire class learned the Shikshashtaka prayers. And we're going to be reciting that with all the younger children and all the older children. service. 
Okay, now we will continue with our path around India, and the children will give you descriptions of where Lord Chaitanya went. We can have all the little children please take a seat. We start off in Navadweep Dam. When you're circumambulating this map of India, you will see Navadweep Dam is a nine petaled lotus flower, and we have three pastimes that occurred here. We will start with Raju's description, Raju Kishore's description of Lord Chaitanya's appearance. When the full moon rose in the month of Falguna, February through March, Lord Krishna manifested himself as Lord Chaitanya. As a lunar, as a lunar eclipse happened, Lord Chaitanya was born and everyone was chanting, Hari, Hari. He had a golden complexion, and his eyes were like lotus flowers, and his feet and hands were pinkish red. He had a beautiful effulgence that defeated the sunlight. The demigods were showering, f showering flowers and had celebrations. They came down to this earth in disguise to see the Lord. When Lord Chaitanya was an infant, Nila Bara Chakravarti explained his horoscope to his parents, Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra. The horoscope said, Lord Chaitanya would deliver the world and bring Krishna consciousness everywhere. He didn't mention Lord Chaitanya taking sannyas because he knew it would upset them. Lord Chaitanya had, has a storehouse full of love for Krishna. People come to the storehouse to get love in Krishna. So that is how Lord Chaitanya was born. And now we ask the Shringa Kavacha to come up and tell us a bit about the pastimes of Nimai. Lord Chaitanya was the all-attractive young boy with a yellowish appearance and curly black hair. He was the cause of constant joy in Mother Sachi's house that even the demigods would sneak into her house to see him. Since he appeared on this earth to spread Krishna consciousness with Nama Sankirtan, he would always cry whenever the women didn't chant the holy names of the Lord. After his mother left the house, he would always scatter objects around and make the house a mess just as he would do when he was Krishna in Vrindavan. During his grain ceremony, people debated what name he should get. Eventually, he was named Nimai because he was born under a Nimba tree. Once, Lord Ananta assumed the form of a snake and played with Nimai, but eventually had to leave, for he was causing the women to fear for Nimai's life. Nimai was very naughty, but everyone loved him even more than their own children. And when, every, when anybody saw him, he stole their hearts. If you go on the map, you will see Selina's sculpture of Nimai and Anantasesha. Next, we ask Krishna Chakra to come and tell us some more pastimes of Nimai. When Nimai was a boy, he performed many naughty pastimes. Nimai would bother the brahmanas and girls as they were bathing in the Ganga. He would sometimes throw sand on people when they were done bathing, making them have to bathe again. 
He would also eat the offerings people would prepare for Lord Vishnu. He would steal people's clothes, flowers, and other items. He put itchy seeds in one girl's hair. He also stole the girl's clothes when they were bathing. They went to, co they went to complain to Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Devi, but when they did, they said it in a playful mood, and inside they felt intense spiritual happiness because they were being harassed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Jagannath Mishra decided that he was going to beat Nimai, but Nimai ran away before his father could get there. When Jagannath Mishra arrived at the Ganga, he couldn't find Nimai. The children said that Nimai had not come that day. Nimai took another route home, got his school books and clothes, and got dirty with ink spots and dust to make it look like he hadn't bathed yet. This fooled his parents and they let him go bathe. When Nimai got back, he told the Brahmanas and other kids how he escaped a big beating from his father. Everyone was happy that he didn't get beaten. In the end, Nimai got away with, with his tricks and everyone was happy. Thank you. Haribo. Now next, the next sculpture you see is the sculpture of the Jagai Madhai story which has been made by Nishringa and the story has been written by Madan Gopal. We ask him to come and speak it. In Navadweep, Lord Chaitanya had a sudden desire to preach the holy name of God, Krishna. He told all of his disciples to go everywhere to teach and chant Hare Krishna. One day when Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda with some other devotees were on the regular route to preach Krishna's name, they came across two drunkards, Jagai and Madai, who were brothers. The devotees who were scared told Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda to not to preach to them. The devotees said, Jagai and Madai do all kinds of sinful things like gambling and drinking, and they have killed and harassed many families. They are very dangerous and they will surely hurt you or even kill you if you speak to them. When Lord Nityananda heard about Jagai and Madai, his heart started to melt with compassion for them. Lord Nityananda had a very strong desire to help these people to become devotees of Lord. One day while Lord Nityananda was walking to Lord Chaitanya's house after preaching for a while, he was suddenly stopped by Jagai and Madai. They asked him, where are you going? Nimai Pandit's house, Lord Nityananda said with a very polite voice. He started to preach to them by telling them to chant Krishna's name. They asked, what is your name? He said, Avaduta. When Madai heard this, he took a clay wine pot and smashed it against Lord Nityananda's head. When the local villagers saw this, they ran to Lord Chaitanya's house and told him about the incident that had occurred. Lord Chaitanya went to the scene, raging with fury. When he got there, he called for his suitor son, Chakra. Lord Nityananda stopped him and said, We are not here to hurt the sinful. We are here to liberate them. If you kill these people, you have to kill everyone on the material world. Jagai and Madai begged for mercy. Lord Chaitanya cooled down and was not mad anymore. He blessed them and they became loving devotees of the Lord. Srinitae Gauranga Mahaprabhu Ki. And now we ask Giriraj to please come and tell us the Chankazi story. He has made a beautiful sculpture of Lord Nishringadev and you can see it over there, and he will now tell the story of that. Once, uh, 500, about 500 years ago, there in India, Lord Chaitanya was having Sankirtan with his devotees. And um, Chankazi, the chief magistrate of India, was disturbed by their chanting. He sent his men out to stop them from chanting. And <laughs> he broke their murdanga into two pieces. Um, Lord Chaitanya started to be make groups of Sankirtan devotees to rebel against Chankazi's, dream, um, Chankazi's rule. That, ex that same night, John Kazi had a dream about Nishringadev, which is what I made my sculpture about, and he was scratched by Nishringadev. Nishringadev then said that 
Your Shingadev said that if you ever disturb a Sankirtan again, I'll have to kill you. And if... And he's... And... No. And that and then the next day he became a devotee with Lord Chaitanya. Now from Nevadweep, we continue on our pastime. Oh yes, we continue on our pastimes to Jagannath Puri. The children have written more essays that were not on the childhood pastimes of Lord Chaitanya that we're not reading today. And if you look, when you get a chance, if you look at the maps that they've done and the class book and different essays on there, you can read it. Um, they wrote about the sannyas pastime of Lord Chaitanya and Keshava Kashmiri, and there's quite a few more pastimes in there. Basically, we had to separate Lord Chaitanya's life into two parts, his Navadweep pastimes and then his pastimes all around India. I wish that we would have had more time to study about the pastimes about India, but we it's a lot to learn about. <laughs> and Lord Chaitanya, of course, we know the Supreme Personality of God. It has innumerable pastimes, and Ananta Sesha is always reciting them. But we hope that the devotees will be happy with what we have done here. From Navadweep, once Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, he wanted to go to Vrindavan, and he made several attempts to go to Vrindavan. But his mother Sachi asked him, please stay in Jagannath Puri. Do not go to Vrindavan because then I will be able to hear news from you. Because Jagannath Puri, as you see on the map, Orissa is closer to West Bengal, whereas Vrindavan is all the way up here. So on the way to Jagannath Puri, he stopped off at the, I believe it was the Ganges. And there is a pastime there that Sagirda has written about called the Dandabanga pastime. She is not here to share it with us today, so Selena will be sharing that with us. So when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arrived at Kamala Pura, <laughs> he left his sannyas staff in the hands of Lord Nityananda. Uh, Lord Nityananda Prabhu, who broke the staff in three parts and threw it in the river Varganadi. Later, this river became known as Danda Banga Nadi. After seeing the temple of Jagannath from a distant place, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately became ecstatic. After offering obeisances to the temple, he began to dance in ecstasy of love of God. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had regained uh, consciousness, he asked Lord Nityananda Prabhu, Please return my staff. Nityananda Prabhu then replied, It has been broken into three parts. Nityananda Prabhu said, When you fell down in ecstasy, I caught you. Both of us together fell upon the staff. Thus the staff broke under our weight. Where the pieces have gone, I cannot say. It is certainly because of my offense that your staff was broken. Now you can punish me on this account as you think proper. After hearing the story about how his staff had been broken, the Lord expressed a little sadness and, displaying a bit of anger, began to speak as follows. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, You have all benefited me by bringing me to Nilakala, Nilachala. However, my only possession was that one staff, and you have not kept it. So all of you should go before or behind me to see Lord Jagannath. I shall not go with you. Mukunda Dada told Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, My Lord, you should go ahead and allow the, all the others to follow. We shall not go with you. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then began to walk very swiftly before all the other devotees. No one could understand the real purpose of the two lords, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. The devotees could not understand why Nityananda Prabhu broke the staff, why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu permitted him to do so, or why, after permitting him, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became angry. The pastime of breaking the staff is very deep. Only one whose devotion is fixed upon the lotus feet of the two lords can understand it. And then from here, we will go to Jagannath Puri. Um, Raja Kishore has made the sculpture of Jagannath Puri with Maharaj Prataparudra sweeping the path in front of the Rathayatra cart. And from there, Lord Chaitanya 
started a trip down to South India. On his way, if you follow the footprints, he stopped at, off at Vidyanagar, where he met with Ramananda Roy and had extensive talks with Ramananda Roy about the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. From there, he made his way down to Kanyakumari. He went to Sri Rangam and Rameshwaram and then went to Kanyakumari. There are actually a lot, a lot of different, different pastimes that he performed in those areas. At Kanyakumari, he had a servant with him, Krishnadas, and Krishnadas was lured away by some bad guys. We will have Induleka come and tell us that story. Lord Chaitanya went to the south of India towards Kanyakumari, and then um, his, he was with his servant, Krishnadas, and somehow he got lured by these people called the Bataharis, who were fake sannyasis who lured people into their community and tortured them and stuff. So Krishnadas somehow got lured into this, these people's community. And Lord Chaitanya is wondering what happened to him. So he goes to their community and he, and he says, he tells them, I'm a renounced sannyasi. You, and you have stolen, you've taken my servant. Why have you done this? You guys have renounced too. And they got really angry when they heard him say this. So they came running at Lord Chaitanya with weapons and swords and stuff. And since he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the weapons turned around and slashed the, these people's bodies instead. And all they, their bodies got cut apart and they all just died. So um, Lord Chaitanya grabbed his servant's hair and ran out of there as soon as he can to get away from these bad people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Induleka. From there, we travel up the other side. Through the mountain range, range Lord Chaitanya visited the Adikeshava temple, where he discovered the fifth chapter of the Brahma Samhita, of which verses we recite every morning in the temple room. And then he went and visited Madhvacharya's temple um, in Udupi, and discovered the Krishna Karnamrita, the second book that he had uh, found on his trip. And then it is unclear exactly where he went, in which um, area, but he passed through Maharashtra and even touched into Gujarat and followed along the Narmada River. Um, under the Narmada River is also the Tapi River and it is said in the scripture that he followed along the Tapi River. In Maharashtra, he also met up with Tukaram, the Saint Tukaram and initiated him into Krishna consciousness. And then in this area is the Dandaka forest. We were not able to pinpoint the exact location of the Dandaka forest. And there, there is a pastime that Lord Chaitanya performed. And I asked Krishna Chakra, who has made a very nice sculpture on it, to please come and tell us that pastime. So, um, like, seven palm trees were devotees of Lord Ram and, um, Lord Chaitanya went over to that forest and he basically just liberated those seven palm trees and they went back to the spiritual world and after that everybody in that area knew that Lord Chaitanya was an incarnation of Lord Ram because they knew only Lord Ram could liberate those seven palm trees. From there, Lord Chaitanya went back to Vidyanagar in South India, and then from there he went back to Jagannath Puri. In Jagannath Puri, again, he had performed many pastimes and had the desire to go and visit Vrindavan Dham. So he made his way through the Jarikhanda forest, and we have a beautiful sculpture here made by Sakshi Gopal, and Sakshi Gopal will also come and tell us the story. Lord abandoned walking on the well-known public road and went instead along a bypass. He thus kept the, the city of Kantaka on his right and entered the forest. When the Lord passed through the solitary forest chanting the holy name of Krishna, the tigers and elephants seeing him gave away. 
when the Lord passed through the jungle in great ecstasy, packs of um, tigers and elephants, no, tigers, elephants, rhinoceros, and boars came, and the Lord passed right through them. Bala Bhadra, okay, Bala Bhadra Bhattacharya was very much afraid to see them, but by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's influence, all the animals stood to one side. One, one day, a tiger was lying on the path, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, walking along the path in, ec in ecstatic love, touched the tiger with his feet. Um, the Lord said, chant the holy name of Krishna. The tiger immediately got up and began to dance and chant Krishna Krishna. Another day, while, while Lord Chaitanya was bathing in, in a river, a herd of manded elephants came there to drink water. While the Lord was bathing and murmuring the Gayatri mantra, the elephants came before him. The Lord immediately splashed some water on the elephants and asked them to chant the name of Krishna. The elephants whose bodies were touched by water splashed by the Lord began to chant Krishna Krishna and, and dance and sing in ecstasy. Some of the elephants fell to, to the ground and some screamed in ecstasy seeing this. Bala Bhattacharya was, Bala Bhadra Bhattacharya was completely un astonished. Sometimes the, sometimes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, chanted very loudly while passing through the jungle. Hearing the his sweet voice and the and all the all the does came near him. Yes, it does. Um, hearing the Lord's um, great great vibration, all the does followed him, left and right. While reciting a verse with great curiosity, the Lord patted them. While Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was passing through the jungle, five or seven tigers came. Joining the deer, the, the tigers began to follow the Lord. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, chant Krishna Krishna. The tigers and deer began to chant Krishna and dance. When all the tigers and does danced and jumped, Bala Bhadra Bhattacharya saw them and was struck with wonder. Indeed, the tigers and deers began to embrace one another and touching mouths, um, they began to kiss. Um, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw all this fun, he began to smile. Finally, he left the animals and continued on, on his way. Various birds, including peacock, saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and began to follow him, chanting and dancing. They were all maddened by, by his holy name of Krishna. When the Lord loudly chanted Hari Bol, the trees and creepers began to began, became jubilant to hear him. Thus all living entities in the in the Jari Khanda forest, some moving and some standing still, became maddened by hearing of the holy name of Lord Krishna vibrated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay, I'm gonna request us to enact this pastime very fast. I would just like to hear everybody make a sound like a lion. 
Not loud enough, let's do it again. And now let's hear Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say, Dear Lions, please chant Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Again, louder. And now let's see if we can make a sound like an elephant. Please chant Krishna Krishna. Krishna. And what about the deer? I don't know what sound deers make. <laughs> From the Jarikanda forest, Lord Chaitanya continued north to Vrindavan. He, you noticed that he generally followed the paths of the rivers and he came to Prayag where he met with, well, there were a bunch of Mayavadi sannyasis but the foremost of them was Prakashananda Saraswati, and Ram has done some study on that. He will come and share us that story. While Lord Chaitanya was in Bengal, he was criticized by the Mayavadi sannyasis for his Sankirtan movement. And the Mayavadis were surprised that Lord Chaitanya accepted Sanas order from the Keshava Bharati, a sect of, a Maya, of the Mayavadis. When Lord Chaitanya was in Prayag, he was told of the criticizing from the Mayavadis. Lord Chaitanya was offered an invitation to sit and speak with the Mayavadis in Prayag. Lord Chaitanya accepted this information. He arrived at the Brahmin's <coughs> home, offered respects to the Mayavadi as his custom, washed his feet, and sat near the foot basin. The great Mayavadi philosopher Prakashananda rose and said to Lord Krishna in a humble voice, My dear sir, why are you sitting in such a... <coughs> why are you who are such a learned sannyas, see, sitting near such a filthy place. Please move from that place and sit with the others. Lord Chaitanya said, I belong to an inferior sect of sannyasis, therefore I do not think that I should sit with you. Let me remain here. Prakashananda then took the Lord's hand and requested him to please sit with him. He asked why he would not speak with the other Mayavadis in Priyag. He also questioned Lord Chaitanya on his actions. Prakashananda asked why Lord Ch asked why Lord Chaitanya, instead of reading the Vedanta, was dancing and singing. Lord Chaitanya said, My spiritual master told me that I was a fool. Therefore, he punished me by not allowing me to study the Vedanta. Instead, he informed me to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Of course, Lord Chaitanya wasn't ignorant of the Vedanta. He just simply wished to show that fools couldn't study Vedanta, the Vedanta just for recreational purposes. After explaining several... Um, philosophical things. Prakashananda stood up and proclaimed Lord Chaitanya as the Supreme Personality of Godhead Narayan. Prakashananda truly believed that Lord Chaitanya was Krishna and became liberated. And then finally, Lord Chaitanya goes and visits Vrindavan. And if you come here on the map, you'll see a beautiful sculpture made by Madan Gopal. He sees all of the animals who are his dear friends because as we know, Little kids, who is Lord Chaitanya? He's Krishna. And he has been gone from Vrindavan for so many years. And so all the animals and trees, the peacocks, the deer, they have been waiting and waiting to see their Lord again. And he comes and visits all of the different holy places and spends a lot of time there. <laughs> So from here, I would like to ask all of the devotees, because remembering the holy places of where the Supreme Personality performs his pastimes, and especially of Sri Vrindavan Dham, is purifying to the heart. And those of you who know the different pastimes in Vrindavan, I would just request that as many of us can, that can, can say one particular place of Vrindavan Dham. So if you know a location, if you can just say it, we'll start with Chaitanya Chandra Prabhu and go along. Just one place that you know of Vrindavan Dham. Some of us have lived in Vrindavan, so just one spot of Vrindavan Dham. I'm going to pass the microphone around and we'll just recite the names of the holy places in Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, there's a beautiful temple called the Madan Mohan Temple, which uh, part of which was dedicated as a, I think it was a residence for Lord Chaitanya by Rupa Goswami. Um, a salt merchant's boat got stuck in the sand, and he went to the merchant went to Rupa Goswami and prayed to him or asked him for help, and he said, "Please ask Krishna for help." So he prayed to Krishna. He went back, and his boat was free. So he sold his goods and came back and built this beautiful sandstone temple. It's on the Parikrama Marg, not too far from our temple, 
And he built this beautiful temple for Madan Mohan and a place of residence for Lord Chaitanya. Radha Raman Mandir. <laughs> I had the blessing to stay there and overnight when my wife and I first got married we went to Brindavan. This is the last time Krishna let me go. Many years ago, 15 years ago. Anyway, we spent the night there and I wanted to go to Mangal Artik. And as I went into the temple, I made obeisances and stood in front of Radha Ramanji. But I was tapped on the shoulder and said, men go to the back. I go, oh. I say, oh, okay. So, so the lady, it's a very gentlemanly temple, Gopal Bhatta Goswami's temple. So I was happily going to the back. I said, yeah, that's where I belong. And it says, good to see the Matajis. Let the women be in front of the Lord. I'll go in the back where I belong. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Banki Vihari Ji Mandir. Krishna Balaram Mandir. Anyone else? Vrindavan? Vrindavan? Go over downhill. The Amuna? No, mine. All right. Chito Krishabaram, right? Yeah, Vrinda Kun. Keshigat. Keshigat. Bake Bihari just wanted to say. Bake Bihari. Dangati. Radakund. Shamakund. Ganga. Jamuna. Kalachanjis. <laughs> I'm supposed to say Loi Bazaar according to Haridas. <laughs> Loi Bazaar. Radha Radha Mother. Srila Prabhupada's rooms, uh, quarters at Radha Damodar Temple. Barshana Dham. Raman Reti. Vishram Ghat. Brinda Kun. I was also going to say Raman Reti, where Krishna and Balaram played. Yes, I was also going to say something about the women in Vrindavan. You, you were talking about the Matajis. And many widowers, they, they go to Vrindavan to retire. And the first time I went to India, on the rooftop of the Guru Kula, it was 6 o'clock in the evening, the sun's going down, and I'm hearing this little old Vaishnavi lady. You can't see her, but you can hear her down there playing kartals, very simple. And she's going, Jaya Radhe, ching, ching. And she's, she did this at six in the evening. And she kept repeating Jaya Radhe. And I thought, this is Radharani's place, Vrindavan. And in 11 o'clock in the evening, I, I went up again on the rooftop, and she was still going. And I thought, such deep devotion, you know, and this is Vrindavan. Wow. Kusum Sarovara. Um, I had some good experiences in the Shaima Kunda, Radha Kunda, got, um, one time I was sitting there, we were chanting the prayer to the Goswamis. <clears throat> I was by myself. And um, so I got absorbed in that chanting. And when I opened my eyes after chanting for about 15 minutes, 
There was a little girl, looked like about three years old or four years old, sitting with the, like, back to sit down to sitting like that, you know? And he was, she was meditating, just listening to me chant. That, that was that, that completely uh, shocked me. And I looked around, where, where's his family? Is he a mother or a father, you know? So a little kid, a little child by, by himself, you know? That was weird, but she was absorbed, listening to me chanting. And then when I stopped chanting, she got up and left. That was, <laughs> and um, that was in the Shamakun atmosphere. That was uh, so transcendental. Every time I passed by somebody, even somebody was older person, uh, I said Hare Krishna, and they they said Sha Radha Kun Hare Krishna. You know. They were absorbed and chanting. But one experience I had, I wanted to spend the night there one time. And I, I got up at about 2 o'clock in the morning. So I started chanting. I would get up and chant. So let me go take a little, sh little bath in the um, Radha Coon. Very, I mean, in the nighttime, there's no light at all, you know. <laughs> no, not a candle or electricity, nothing. So, so I was trying to go on out and get, get some, I was going to, hold that for a second. I was going to walk down in this, the gods, step by step, follow, feeling myself for, for you know, because I couldn't see nothing. And I hit the, I, when I got to the cold water, I said, well, I'm, I'm at the god. So I, I stand, I slipped, and I just, like a jet, I went down the, boom, deep into the Radakun, you know? <laughs> and it, it, we, I couldn't see anything, and I could feel, so, whoa. So I, I thought to myself, well, if I drown, I'll just, I'll just drown and ride in a coon. You know? So I just got surrendered, so I just, ah, ah this, this is my time to go home. And, <laughs> and then some mystical, Mystical hand, I don't know what it was, <laughs> caught me up both feet and pushed, like, in a you know, very fast, pulled him back up. Whoop. To the, you know, so I, I was like, he spit me out, you know. <laughs> you know, get out, you know. <laughs> and I actually looked back and said, oh, wow. I mean, I was, I was so offensive, maybe I was offensive, so offensive. <laughs> that the Radha rejected me. <laughs> and I, that, that experience has stayed with me for, for, you know, 35 years. I said, whoa, how I was rejected from Radha <laughs> But uh, no, I had some good experience in there, but I just, you know, that one particular thing that just stayed with me, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry if I talked too long about this. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Seba Kunj. Thank you, Raj. Um, from Vrindavan, Lord Chaitanya goes back to Jagannath Puri and he spends a good part of the la later years of his life um, just absorbed in spiritual ecstasy and separation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his mood as Srimati Radharani. Now we would request Giraj Maharaj to please speak something about either Navadweep Dham or any instruction that the children can take from you about Lord Chaitanya. And then after Giraj Maharaj speaks, the children will be doing a bhajan that they have uh, prepared for you. And then after that, there will be prashadam. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. It was a great honor and privilege and pleasure to be here with all of you for this joyful celebration. I was struck by the uh, narration uh, about Lord Chaitanya passing through the Jari Khanda forest. 
and how he induced the tigers and elephants to uh, chant and dance, and how the different creatures who are usually inimical to each other were chanting and dancing together and embracing and even kissing. <laughs> and uh, it, this pastime reminds me of the song Paramakaruna uh, because in, in the purport to the song Srila Prabhupada mentions how Lord Chaitanya induced the animals to chant Hare Krishna. And he says that although we do not have the power to induce animals to chant Hare Krishna, we should at least try to encourage human beings to chant Hare Krishna. Of course, um, according to the proper definition of a human being, dharmena uh, hina pasubi samana, that unless one follows dharma, one is no better than an animal. So from that point of view, the people who Srila Prabhupada encountered in America when he first came were pretty much on the level of animals. And he was so powerful as representative of Lord Chaitanya that he was able to get us to chant and dance. So it's a great mission we have to chant and dance and encourage others to chant and dance. Uh, the knowledge that you students are getting and the experience that you're getting uh, will stay with you for the rest of your lives and probably into eternity. Um, Sometimes we don't fully appreciate the value of what we are given at the time, but we appreciate it more later. Of course, if so someone's fortunate, he'll appreciate it at the time. Um, but I think you will look back at the t time you spent in TKG Academy chanting and dancing and reading and writing and speaking uh, as uh, very valuable. I'm sure you've heard different graduates of the school speak about how they felt they benefited from the school. Uh, and I'm sure one day you'll also uh, say the same thing. So we pray to Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, all of the Panchatattva and other associates of Lord Chaitanya to bless you all, uh, to realize the purpose of human life, uh, not live like animals, but to live like good devotees, uh, worthy of the, your uh, illustrious uh, parents, spiritual parents and um, biological parents, and uh, carry on this mission. Hare Krishna. Hare Now we will be sharing with you the Paramakaruna Bhajan. Jaya, jaya.